Okay, I just thought I'd talk about um, some of their cuts and blisters and uh, just the way I found best to deal with them. Um, the uh, the best kind of plasters that I've found so far aren't things like uh, blus uh, blister plasters. Uh, what I tend to find is uh, that if I tried to put blister plaster on to start off with, it would uh, degradate um, and basically break down and all you'd be left with um, by the time you took your socket off was loads of balls of uh, gel um, just stuck to the hair on your stump so uh, that wasn't great because they just break down completely I think with the heat and, um, and with the sweat as well um, I do run a lot so it it tends to be a mixture of kind of the running and the cycling with the running obviously uh, the, the knees not bending as much, um, so any kind of um, any kind of uh, blisters or cuts that you might get are quite often around the side or or on the uh, patella ligament. Um, but with the cycling, because I wear the same socket for cycling and for um, and for running, um, it, it tends to be quite high at the back. Whereas if I was just wearing a different leg, then the uh, the cycling uh, socket would probably be a lot lower at the back, so the area where I tend to uh, tend to get cuts or problems is not at the front uh, from running; it's actually from cycling. I tend to get a cut at the back of the knee where um, all the um, all this liner basically, um, this liner here, is basically crumples behind the back of the knee, um, just here. So on this area just here basically round here cuts into the back of the leg um, you probably wouldn't be able to see that particularly well but what it does is it just ruffles up and that pinches the skin against against the socket because um, I've got quite an aggressive uh, socket I, I like them as tight as possible really um, and there's no real padding on it it's, it's quite thin carbon so um, I don't think it's quite so much the socket that digs in, but it's the mixture of the um, of the outer suction line and ruffling up um, against the skin and the side of the socket, so it kind of pinches it a little bit as as my knee bends up um, when I'm cycling. So um, that's not great. But I've I've, I've found uh, these elastic plast plasters, which are nothing specialised. They're just basically ones off the shelf. Um, which are basically these ones. Um, they are they're the invisible plasters, and they're just really good. They don't tend to break down at all in the socket. I mean, with the amount of sweat that you get in there, they will they will uh, ruffle up and start to come off at some point. But I find that I can go out on a long run, and uh, as long as it's not pinching too much, then it doesn't cause a problem, and the plasters all stay on for a couple of days. Um, they don't tend to break down at all either. Um, I mean, the uh, the cuts that I've got at the moment are um, uh, are not brilliant, and they're in a place where I've kind of had to start uh, leaving the socket off and just let them breathe, really, because uh, they've scabbed over. So uh, I'm just putting these plasters on at the moment. So basically, um, as you can see, it's kind of at that point at the side. So just here. Um, so it's quite an awkward place because uh, it's hard to keep the plasters on when the legs bending like that inside a socket all the time. Um, and as you can see, as uh, as my leg bends, all this kind of ruffles up and I think pinches in the liner and on the socket. Um, but I found these plasters really good and uh, basically they tend to stay on. So if you're having problems, I mean, I've even tried using uh, tachyderm because these ones are waterproof as well, but I find with tachyderm, um, even if you cut cut the tachyderm down or the post stop, um, it's quite good as well. But being behind the knee, it just tends to ruffle up and starts to pull off. Um, so I've found that I've been able to go swimming with these plasters on as well. So yeah, they're pretty good really.